Hey guys, how's it going? It's John again from Hive Music, and today I wanted to make a quick little video and go over using external synthesizers with Ableton as well as interfacing a push to controller with that synthesizer. Um, and this is something I've never really had a lot of experience or opportunity to mess around with until recently when a buddy of mine was kind enough to let me borrow his uh, Dave Swift synthesizer here. So I've been messing around with that for the last couple weeks and I've learned a few things. So I just kind of want to dive in here, show you what I've learned, show you some of the pitfalls, show you how to do some workarounds that you might kind of run into. They're kind of weird. So uh, let's just kind of get started here. And for the, for the first thing here, if you, this is the first time you're messing around with this thing, you want to make sure that you know, if you go into preferences, audio, input, my particular synth, I've got routed to inputs three and four on the back of my audio interface. So that's obviously on, it's enabled. We're good to go there. And in here, in our MIDI section, we can see that I've got the keyboard input, output, as well as my Ableton push here. So that's all good to go. Um, and it, once that's all set up on your end, you're good to go too. And so it doesn't get any easier than this. All you need to do to interface with your synth and Ableton is just create a new mini channel. And we're gonna clean up our track here, get rid of the stuff that we don't need. And in instruments, you're gonna find this external instrument here. And it's no different behavior wise from analog, collision, operator, anything. You just drag it right onto a MIDI track and then select your MIDI output, or excuse me, MIDI input would be, uh, or no, it would be output. You're, you're outputting MIDI to your keyboard here, and we're pulling audio in through channel three and four, and that's that's it. And you can mess around with the knobs, everything. And from there, you could even record MIDI while you play. And play it back. And of course you can always tweak this while you're doing it, like play around with the knobs and stuff, get your filter set. Simple as that. And it really doesn't get any more simple than that Ableton. I mean, it, it's just straightforward. The only thing you really have to keep in mind is that this is armed, uh, either hard armed or soft armed, depending upon, like me, I've got an Ableton push in it, on it pretty much all the time when I'm working in Ableton, so it's gonna be soft armed if I've got the track active. So that's the other nice thing is for me, I'm not a very good hardware, like keyboard player. Um, and so I rely heavily upon my push to do chord work, scales, things like that. And that's, it's again, the same type of deal where if we remove our MIDI, using this actual instrument here, the external instrument, now that I've got my push enabled and already on, all I have to do is push any key on my keyboard, or excuse me, on the push. With pitch bend, I mean, everything works. You can change scales. It's just that simple. And you can, again, record down from the push and use your push as a, as a controller to get sound out of your synthesizer. And all of it's just recorded down into MIDI which is just super, super, super easy. Um, now, if you wanna take this a bit further, one of the things that I've really had a lot of fun with this last couple of weeks was using an arpeggiator with the synthesizer here. So again, Ableton makes it super easy. All you need to do is go into your, your MIDI effects and grab it, uh, an arp, toss it on there, and then from there, uh, we just wanna draw some some chords here. So we'll just, let's draw it some chords, we don't know what they are, don't really care at this point. And uh, we're just gonna put them here, just so we have something. And then of course we can mess around with it right in here with our ARP. And you can 
and play with the knobs on your synth while you're doing this. you can just go crazy with it and that's awesome it again just super super simple super straightforward now one of the pitfalls that i personally ran into here is this works great for ableton's arp but if you want to use something along the lines of say we're just going to move this um an external arpeggiator called Cthulhu, which is again, a very popular choice. But the problem here is Cthulhu has a built-in synthesizer. So if you go to put this on your track, it overwrites the external instrument. And so you lose the ability to easily feed MIDI into your keyboard and pull audio back out. So what do you want to do in that case? Well, you kind of have to do a little bit of advanced routing here. So what we want to do is open up and create a new MIDI track. And we're just going to move our MIDI that we had before feeding our external instrument. This is still here. We're going to move that up to what we're going to call, well, let's, let's clear this off here. So we have a blank and we're going to move Cthulhu to this channel. And now basically we have Cthulhu acting as its own synthesizer with these chords, which is great. We can draw something here. So it's doing something. But the thing is, is we don't want to listen to Cthulhu's internal synthesizer. So let's go ahead and turn that off. We're going to see our, what we need to do. If you're not seeing this section here, if you'll watch, you know, I go over some of this on my, my prior videos, but you're, you're looking for this IO button here. If you don't see that section, go ahead and toggle it on. And once it's on, we're going to basically turn this output from master to sends only. And then now we won't hear this. Cthulhu's just using uh, it's basically it, it's MIDI generation engine. And what we're going to do now is pipe the MIDI from Cthulhu out into our external synth here. So we're just going to call this external synth. And uh, what we need to do here is take the input of Cthulhu and again, select Cthulhu here and change this to an input. That's all there is to it. And again, you can do the same thing because we're feeding MIDI into the synth, we can modify it using our knobs here on the physical hardware synthesizer. And you can just get crazy with it. You know, obviously you can mess around with it forever until you get whatever sound you're going for. And so that's really the only real pitfall to using something like this where it has an external synthesizer. You just need to be aware that it's going to overwrite this. And if your particular VST or tool that you're using does do that, then you just need to basically create a router using Ableton's, well, router. Uh, it, it's not too complicated. It's, it's a little bit more of an advanced technique, but this kind of bypasses some of the issues you might run into. Um, now for the sake of the video, a lot of you might want to just stop here. 
I'm going to take it a little bit step further and show you what this does, because this is kind of taking care of some of Ableton's internal routing for us. And it, it's, it's kind of doing a lot of things behind the scenes. So in case you want to know, either you want to create this yourself or you just like to know what it's doing, what it's basically doing is it's creating two channels. It's a MIDI channel and an audio channel. So let's go ahead and, and create a MIDI channel and an audio channel. And we're gonna clear these off just to keep things nice and tidy. And we're gonna outline kind of like this exactly here. So we have MIDI and audio and we have MIDI and audio. And all this is really doing, let's go ahead and turn this off because we don't want this feeding back in to, uh, to our channel right now. And all we need to do is again, we're just gonna create some MIDI. It doesn't matter what it is at this point. We're just gonna create some chords and uh, just duplicate them. So we have something. And now we've got our chord pattern here, feeding MIDI. We're gonna feed that into our keyboard using this output here, keyboard. And that's it. And now we're gonna do, we're, we're just gonna rename these here. We're just gonna do uh, MIDI out and audio in. And now what we need to do is select our input, external in, and we've already got three and four selected, but in case you don't, you will need to change this to your particular, um, you know, whatever you have your synth routed into. And from there, you just select them both and we want arm the tracks and that's it. Uh, it should be, oh, we need to change this to an input, obviously, sorry. And of course, from there, you can, again, throw an arpeggiator on here, should you want to. with it or you can even bounce this down as audio if you really wanted to as well while you're playing with that even And it's as simple as that. You can basically move this to another audio channel. And now you've got what you've recorded as a separate audio channel that you can mess around with and do all sorts of crazy stuff with. And just have fun with it. So that's kind of, I mean, that's exactly what this is doing here when you have this enabled is it just basically taking MIDI out, which you have here, feeding it to your keyboard and pulling audio back in from your selection. It's just a heck of a lot easier, you know, to use an external instrument than it is to always have two channels here. And it's also cleaner. And also remembering to have this set to an input, arm both of these tracks and everything like that. It's just, it's, you know, sometimes in certain instances, especially when you're using something like Cthulhu, you might find some of these techniques more helpful, but I just kind of find that it's, you know, it's nice to know what's going on behind the scenes sometimes. And the only other thing to keep aware of is if you have say an audio interface or an audio in here, pulling audio from your synth, and you also have, you know, this, this external instrument pulling audio from, the same source and both are enabled, you're gonna get feedback. You see how it got a little bit more different? So you just have to be aware of that. You're either gonna want one disabled if you're using this method or you know, basically you turn these off and use this.
and fiddle around with your knobs and have all sorts of fun stuff there. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's basically all there is to it, guys. So, uh, like I said, 99% of the time, you're probably going to be more than fine using this external instrument unless you're using something like Cthulhu. Otherwise, have fun, experiment, and yeah, I mean, if you have any questions or anything, hit me up and uh, we'll work through them. Thanks, guys.